What's going on, everybody? It's Richard Cobra here, the Blue Collar Nerd. Gosh, it's been a while, huh? I feel like I haven't seen you guys all year. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to 2024. I hope you all had a fantastic holiday season. And it is that time once again. It's time for our seasonal release notes. Let's go over them. <laughs> We are starting off with the first y'all item of the year. And that item is the Wells Fargo financing integration. Now, to be clear, what's happening with this release isn't the full rollout. It's just an early access waitlist that you can join. And people on that early access list will gain access to the Wells Fargo integration in early February of 2024. So once this feature fully rolls out, like with its general availability launch, then you'll see this note on the release notes again, and I'll bust out the y'all hat once more. But for now, if you would like to join that early access waitlist, there is a link in the release notes document, and I'll also uh, put it in the description box down below for you. All right, next under accounting, I'm keeping the y'all hat on. We have invoice templates available in the document manager. So let me explain this. Uh, Service Titan for a while now has been working on something called the document template engine. The document template engine is something that allows Service Titan users to use a nice graphical user interface to build out document templates so that their documents can look however they want them to look. So that document template engine is now this kind of core thing, this core feature that other features can tap into. So going forward, you're going to start seeing more and more things utilizing this document template engine. For example, commercial service agreements already uses this. So you can format commercial service agreements to look however you want, have whatever pieces of information you want, and exclude anything that you don't. And now with this release, invoices are using the document template engine as well, meaning you can make your invoices look however you want. And you can make multiple templates and decide at the time of printing or sending the invoice which one you want to use. So to build your first template, you're going to go into settings, operations, and document templates. As I'm making this recording, I'm remembering that we also have an older feature called invoice templates. Uh, so that's a little confusing. But one thing at a time here, uh, what we're looking for is document templates. This sample account that I'm using has uh, commercial service agreements enabled, so you can also see that I have a service agreement template in here already, but we're gonna come up here to the add template button uh, and say new template. We're gonna give our template a name, let's call this the uh, residential invoice template. And then we click this drop down to select the uh, template type, which in this case is going to be invoice. And then we're gonna click next. And that takes us into this. This is the document template engine. This is the builder that we use to set it up. So I'm not gonna to spend too much time in this video going over all the nuances of how to use this, but I will do a high level overview here. So first uh, up in the top here, we have PDF header and PDF footer. Uh, when you go to drop down and select what you want here, you're actually selecting templates for that header and footer. So like, for example, I could uh, make a header template here and then click save and publish and then uh, when I went to make another template, I would have this header template as an option under PDF header. Same thing with footer. And then we've got other options here as far as our paper size, paper margin, and whether we want to orient this as a landscape or portrait. And then uh, it's kind of just a drag and drop experience. So I'm, I'm in my heading here. I've got this delete or duplicate button, or I can just X out. And then maybe I wanted to add in a box of text underneath that. Uh, again, go back and maybe I wanted to add in the job address, for example. And then once it's time to like break out the different tasks and things, I would wanna make some columns. And you can choose uh, different layouts here. So I'll do like three columns for name, quantity, and price. And as you can see over here, you've got tons of customization options. You can change the background color. Uh, you can have a background image behind this. You can change the padding and the border. I mean, it's really fully customizable. If you've ever used like maybe a, a website builder or even something like Canva, you might be uh, kind of familiar with how something like this works. Again, I'm not gonna spend too much time in this video breaking this down. Frankly, I haven't spent that much time with it myself just yet, but definitely jump in there and play around with it. But anyways, once you have some invoices built out, anytime you go to print or email an invoice, you'll have the option to pick between your templates. And this is something people have wanted for a really long time. People have always really wanted to have more customization options available when it comes to their invoices. So it's really great that this is here now. And I know that everybody also really wants customization options with their estimates. And that will be happening soon. Remember, a document template engine is this core feature that other features can tap into. So you're gonna see more and more things using it going forward and estimates is going to be one of those things. 
Okay, next up, we've got three features that all kind of group together. Those features are property management billing, multi-party billing, and consolidated billing. And these features are going to be mainly useful for companies that do commercial work. So if that's not you, feel free to skip this section. Uh, I always chapter these videos out to make it easy to skip stuff that's not relevant to you. But for everybody else uh, to access these features, we're going to go into settings and then configurable billing. And do note that this particular settings page is only viewable to admin users. And this is where we're able to enable these different features. So we'll start here with the property management billing. Okay, so without this feature turned on, the name that is tied to a job has a one-to-one -one relationship with the name tied to the invoice that is associated with that job. So you couldn't change one without changing the other. If you change the customer on the job, you would also change the customer on the invoice. And that could make things kind of complicated in a situation where your point of contact is like an HOA or a property management company or something like that, but they're not the ones that are actually going to be paying the bill. The property owner is going to be handling that. So with this property management billing feature turned on, the name on the invoice no longer has to match the name on the job. So for example, we can go into this invoice here and then hit the edit pencil next to the bill to name. And then we can change that bill to to a different customer. And when you do that, you'll get this little yellow alert next to the bill to name, just letting you know that it doesn't match the name on the associated job. Or if you already know that every time that you deal with this particular property, you're gonna be dealing with the same property management and the same bill to person. Well then on the location page, there's also this new property owner field. And changing that will automatically change the bill to on all invoices for that location uh, to the property manager versus the customer that's tied to the location. So that way it just happens by itself automatically. You don't have to go in and individually change the name on the invoices. Okay, so that's property management billing. Next is multi-party billing. So as the name implies, this feature is useful for situations where you need to bill multiple parties. For example, maybe you go out to a job to do work that like an HOA is covering or a property owner is covering, but then the tenant also wants to do some sort of upgrade that they would have to pay for themselves. Well, with this feature enabled, you can check off invoice items and then click move invoice items to create a new adjustment invoice that those items are gonna get moved to. And then you can set a separate bill to on that new adjustment invoice. Previously, without this feature, if you ran into that situation, then you had to do basically that, but manually. So you had to like delete items off of the first invoice and then create an adjustment invoice and then manually add those items back to the adjustment invoice. So this feature makes that a more automated and streamlined process. Okay, and then finally, we've got consolidated billing. So let's say, for example, you're going out to a quadplex, it's got four units, and you want to track the work that you're doing at every individual unit separately. To accomplish that, what some people are currently doing is creating every individual unit as a location under the main customer. So unit one is its own location, unit two, unit three, unit four, all separate locations. And then you can book four individual jobs, but the problem is you can't assign those jobs to the correct location yet. Because in order for this to actually work properly, okay, like our property owner only wants one bill, right? We're technically doing four jobs on our end of things, but it's one building, the property owner doesn't want four bills, they want one bill. That's accomplished by creating a project and then sending the project invoice because that's consolidated all of the jobs inside of that project. Problem is when you create a project, you're only able to add jobs that are associated to the location assigned to that project. So to get around that, you would have to book all four jobs under the same location and then go back in and change the locations later after the fact. So with this consolidated billing feature enabled, you're now able to move invoices from anywhere into a project. The invoices don't all have to be associated with the same location. So you would do this from the invoices screen under the main accounting screen. From there, you can check off multiple invoices and then go to the actions dropdown and add those invoices to a project. I wanna acknowledge that that particular piece, the consolidated billing, this is just a phase one thing. So we're acknowledging this doesn't exactly solve every problem associated with consolidated billing today, but it is one step that's being taken in the direction that we need to go. All right, next, there's a new permission that allows you to restrict viewing of job costing details. So assuming you have the ability to edit permissions, then under employee permissions, you'll see this new one called costing, and that's going to control access to labor costing details, including payroll adjustments, performance pay, and labor pay in the job costing screen and budget versus actuals tables on the project dashboard. All right, next under customer and location records, we have another, another y'all item. item. So there are now new options available for adjusting the tables on the customer and location pages. So looking at a table on either one of those pages, you'll see this new edit columns button. Click on that and you're able to reorder columns. You can choose columns to show or hide. And you can also freeze columns so that they stay in place for reference while you're horizontally scrolling. 
This was a major request for the new customer and location pages. People really wanted to be able to hide stuff that's not relevant to them or move things around so that more relevant stuff is closer to the left. Reorder things, whatever. People wanted more customization within those tables and now it's here. Now, if you want all the in-depth details on how to use these new features, as well as a full demo of how to use the new customer and location screens in general, then I did all of that in a recent video I did on the sunsetting of the legacy customer and location pages. Which brings me to our next note the legacy customer and location designs are being sunset. Meaning, essentially, that they've passed on. Now, if you're somebody who was still attached to those old designs and are feeling some grief, please, I beg you, go and watch that video I made recently about the sunsetting of the old design. I'll put a link to it in the description box down below, as well as at the end of this video. Next, y'all hats back on, we have an enhanced experience for editing your contact methods. So now, whenever you edit a contact method that exists in multiple records, you'll be prompted with a message asking you if you want to update that contact in all of the places that it exists. Now, previously, you could edit a contact from the customer record, and it would ask you, do you want to change that on the location records as well. And vice versa, if you made a change from the location record, it would ask you, do you want to change this on the customer record as well? So those things aren't new, but you weren't able to sync between sibling locations. So if you had the same contact on location A and location B that were all under one customer, and you made an edit to that contact on location A, you could trickle that up to the customer page, but you couldn't then move it over to this other location, location B. But now you can, which makes it a lot easier to keep everything in sync. Next, under Dispatch, we have Dispatch Board Enhancements to give you quick access to frequently used items. So now, when you open the Jobs Detail flyout on the Dispatch Board, you can see the start time for each individual appointment. Also, links to job records are now included in the Messages section of the Dispatch Board. And the Technician drop-down menu items are now arranged a bit more intuitively. Plus, you can now collapse and expand Teams. Next, where Back on that y'all ball for the next three features. So first, whenever you hover over an appointment on the dispatch board, the invoice subtotal is going to be shown, assuming that there is an associated invoice. Also, there's a new configuration that lets you choose whether you want to open job records in the same tab, the active tab that you're on, or in a new tab. This was a big ask. Some people didn't like that opening the job page from the dispatch board would open it up in a new tab. And so now it's up to you whether you want that to happen or not. To make that change from the dispatch board, you're gonna click this little cog icon, go down to jobs detail flyout, and then select whether you want to open it in a new tab or in the current tab. And remember that the jobs detail flyout itself is also optional. That's controlled from this same page under board appearance. Howdy y'all. Next, non-job events without a timesheet code can now be displayed on mobile. So recently-ish, uh, within the last year or so, I think, uh, we gained the ability to create non-job events without tying a timesheet code to them. But non-job events without a timesheet code wouldn't show up on mobile for the technician to see which caused some confusion. But now with this update, that's no longer the case. The non-job event will show up on the mobile side for the technician, whether or not there is an associated timesheet. Howdy, y'all. All right, next under Dispatch Pro, we have the general availability launch of Dispatch Pro. So real high level, the elevator pitch is that Dispatch Pro uses AI and machine learning to automatically and intelligently assign technicians to jobs and manage your dispatch board. It's able to factor in technician performance and skills and zones and the distance between jobs. And you have configuration options to choose how much you want it to weigh getting the right tech on the right job, like how much we want to focus on performance versus how much we want to focus on efficient routing. So how you want to weigh that is totally up to you. I have filmed a separate video on Dispatch Pro. Uh, I still don't know yet if it's going to be out by the time this video is out. If it is, I'll put a link to it in the description box down below. If it's not, just keep an eye out for it, it won't be long. Next, you can now troubleshoot Dispatch Pro per individual job. So basically, this feature gives you more insight into Dispatch Pro's decision making. So in a situation where Dispatch Pro makes a choice and you're like, uh, I don't really understand that, I'm not sure why it did what it did, you can go into this troubleshooter and check off the technicians that you think should have been assigned or that you're confused why it didn't pick, click troubleshoot, and then it will tell you exactly why it didn't pick those technicians. And it might tell you, yep, according to my calculations, that wasn't the best technician for the job, I did that on purpose. Or it could tell you something like, hey, I didn't consider that technician because you have Dispatch Pro disabled for that technician. Maybe you didn't realize that and you're like, oh, well that makes sense, I need to go change that setting. 
Or maybe it tells you something like, hey, I didn't consider that technician because that technician doesn't have the skills necessary for this job type. And then maybe you're like, oh, dang it, that technician is actually supposed to have that skill. Let me go add it. Okay, next under estimates, we have a new Titan intelligence feature for Pricebook Pro, which is auto proposals. So this feature automatically generates good, better, best proposal templates for you using artificial intelligence. So basically within just a couple of clicks, you can have a whole bunch of proposal templates for your technicians to use. Next, there is a new document section on the estimate screen. So on an estimate, you'll see this new document section. This is gonna pull in any associated pictures, even like price book pictures from uh, items that are on this estimate. You also have an upload file button where you can add a new attachment. And then anything in that document section is going to be available to you to attach when you go to email that estimate. And this does apply both on office and mobile sites. Next. <laughs> Another y'all item. So this is a y'all item that came from my original list. I'm really excited to see this one. So you can now select individual estimates to email when you're sending out an estimate, not just all or nothing. So previously, okay, you went out on a job that creates an opportunity and you create five estimates within that opportunity. When you went to go and email the estimates, you had this checkbox where you could send all of the estimates that were within that opportunity, or you could uncheck that and send just the one. But if you were only trying to send three out of the five, there was no way to do that. But now there is. So when you go to email an estimate, you'll see the section here with all of the estimates on that opportunity, and you can check to include all, or you can just check off individual estimates. Howdy, y'all. Okay, next under Fleet Pro, we've now got maintenance reminders within Fleet Pro. So you can set up reminders for things like oil changes and brake replacements or whatever. And then you can have those reminders automatically send out via email once they're due to help keep you on top of your fleet maintenance. All right, next under forms, we've got yet another y'all item. So there's now a new forms submissions data set within reporting. And this new data set allows you to access information captured within a form via reporting. Now there was previously a forms data set, but that didn't show you the information contained inside of those forms. This new data set, form submissions, does, which opens up a whole world of possibilities. Okay, next under price book, I'm keeping the y'all hat on. You now have the ability to create a template price book item. So what exactly does that mean? Well, uh, hopefully we all know and understand that it is the best practice to have everything that you ever sell in your price book. However, building up to that point takes time. There's a lot of stuff out there. So every once in a while, you might run into some thing that you've never had to sell before. And you're like, well, that's not in the price book. So what do we do? Some people would create a miscellaneous task and then let the technicians have the permission to edit prices. But that is very much not best practice. You really shouldn't have every technician just able to edit whatever price they want whenever. So with this feature, you can still have a miscellaneous task, but you would mark that as a template price book item which means you can remove the permission for technicians to edit prices in the price book, but this one task, this one task in particular, they will be able to edit the price on. Now I will note that this is a gated feature. Once that is enabled, you would go to settings, operations, and template price book items, and then toggle that setting switch on. After you do that, you'll have this other checkbox to choose whether or not you want to enable editing of that item in mobile. So if you wanna trust your technicians to handle this themselves, you can check that off. Or if you want somebody in the office to have to handle these types of situations, you would leave it unchecked. So with this enabled, it's going to create a new category called template items in your price book, and that's going to have a template service, material, and equipment. And when you add template items to an invoice or estimate, you'll be able to edit the description and price fields. Now I do just wanna throw this out there. This feature is for like break glass in case of emergency. Please do not use this as a giant band-aid over an inadequately set up price book. If you're gonna use this feature, it should be very rare that you have to break it out. Howdy, y'all. All right, and finally, under support, we have a new My Cases view in the Help Center, which gives you quick access to your support tickets. So when you click that question mark icon in the upper right-hand corner, that opens up the Help Center, and you'll now see this new section in there called My Cases. So here you're able to review past cases so that you can remember the answer to a question that maybe you previously asked. You can also keep track of any of your open cases there. And administrators will be able to view all cases from the company and filter by who created the case. Previously, you were able to track your support cases from a tab in the community, but now having it here in the Help Center makes it even more accessible. But anyways, that's all I got for today. Hey, be sure to hit like if you liked this video and found it valuable. Be sure to subscribe to Service Titan's YouTube channel if you haven't done that already. Hit that bell icon so that YouTube notifies you anytime we upload a new video. And leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite new thing is about the update. Please remember that your engagement through likes, comments, and subscriber numbers are the ways in which my success is measured. Appreciate it. Happy New Year.
Peace.